Hello to all and welcome on The Watchers TV and today we will come back on a timepiece introduced earlier this year but we have such beautiful behind the scene sequences on its making that I thought it was totally worth coming back on the Recital 26 Brainstorm 1 by Beauvais 1822. So when I first heard that Beauvais would be introducing a full sapphire case timepiece well I said to myself oh well yet another brand jumping on this sapphire bandwagon something naturally seen already a few times over the recent years to say the least. But to be honest, when I saw the result, well, I was really impressed. So not only is it a clever way of coming with a new interpretation of how to use sapphire, and I'll come back on this uh, in a second, but more importantly, it's so suited to expose the rather crazy intricacy of the movement, and especially its extremely uh, original stairs-like uh, architecture with the various components and gear trains that are kind of seated on uh, various levels, in an open theater type of base plate and all these uh, mechanical parts slash spectators looking at the show and uh, paying tribute to the solar regulating organ on the center stage. Or well, you can see this uh, totally the other way around and the regulator being some kind of philharmonic orchestra director and giving the precise tempo to the various parts and musicians uh, working in harmony for the greater good of this timepiece's proper running. Okay, I know, it's the end of the year and it probably sounds like I'm getting totally carried away, so let's uh, be more uh, down to earth and let's describe more in detail the Recital 26 Brainstorm 1. So this timepiece uh, takes the now familiar writing desk uh, feature, uh, kind of a signature of the brand, uh, with this asymmetrical case already seen in some previous models, such as last year's winner of the GPHD with the Recital 22 Grand Recital. So the main originality with the Sapphire case is that it's a full monoblock piece, meaning that the full case, the sides, uh, uh, the bezel, uh, naturally the front glass, has been machined from one single piece of sapphire and when you see all the different shapes present here well you can easily imagine how difficult this must have been to come up uh, with the right setup uh, not even talking about the time required to machine a single case but one of the main advantages of uh, having done so is that you get a really sturdy case there's for instance no real weak point of uh, two sapphire parts glued together something uh, which sometimes can also alter the transparency of the, the cases and the very clever aspect is that the entire case is then bolted, uh, so to say, on a chassis made out of titanium, a chassis incorporating uh, the lugs and onto which the actual movement will be attached to. And well, what a movement or what an orchestra. So this one features naturally the double-sided uh, flying tourbillon with variable uh, balance developed a few years back by Beauvais. Uh, with this uh, sun-shaped cage which requires a lot of attention when it comes to its uh, manufacturing and even more so uh, with its finishing uh, among uh, different operations. We have one called berçage in French. And before talking about some other technical details, the one point I really wanted to focus on in this video is actually its base plate. So that's an amphitheater that I was like referring to just a moment ago. Because yes, this base plate is one piece of complex machining and sincerely I don't think I can recall of a more complicated base plate I have ever seen before. Well, and in this case, I mean the sapphire case precisely pays tribute to this technical feat, letting you observe and admire uh, the various levels and step-looking feature of this uh, structural component. So not only is it difficult to machine and required weeks of preparation, setting up and testing before getting this uh, special machine uh, up and running, but each machining operation for one base plate requires almost five hours and no less than 55 different tools used in the process. So that's quite something. So, but once machine, well, you only get the, the raw component uh, as it will naturally have to go through multiple uh, full manual finishing operations performed by the artisans of Beauvais in order to get a base plate, which for me is a work of art by itself and without being too nerdy, well, it is something you can only fully grasp uh, when shown to you when standing by itself. And once assembled and encased, well, it's naturally a bit more complicated to grasp this complexity. Okay, let's now go back quickly on some of the main characteristics of this timepiece. And for those familiar with uh, some of Beauvais' uh, recent timepieces, well, this uh, R26 uh, takes a few elements seen before, such as this uh, moon phase indicator found at 12 o'clock, and yet another complex and delicate component to machine and finish. So it holds a practical 10 days of power reserve, and this is achieved with the use 
of only one barrel. Okay, this uh, may uh, sound like not much, but seriously it is, as generally you would often find a couple of barrels or even more to achieve the same uh, capacity of uh, powers of. And by the way, winding it uh, won't take you too long as it also uses this uh, spherical differential system, which actually doubles uh, your winding. So something that's also seen on previous models. Uh, and uh, at uh, three, four o'clock position, you will find the power reserve indicator. And on the opposite side of the dial, well, you'll find a big date and you actually have like a loop uh, system which increases the size of the data uh, disks uh, that are found below. So regarding the dial, well, you have actually a couple of options, either coming with this kind of helix shape uh, dial made out of aluminum. And there is also a blue quartz uh, transparent version and even a unique uh, piece, a uh, green uh, version of it. Uh, but you may ask for some customization if you are ever interested by this timepiece. And as mentioned in the intro, well, this timepiece is called the Recital 26 Brainstorm one, which probably means that we will see a new iteration in the near future and can't wait to see how uh, they will make it evolve. Okay, so this is it for this uh, contemplative video report. I thought it was a nice way of finishing the year. Thanks for watching, all the very best to you and see you real soon and a massive VIVA watchmaking to you!